in December, many people dream of a white Christmas. Or they may think, let it snow and all the fun that goes along with it. It's actually kind of like that in this research lab at Washington University in St. Louis. So you can see it has that soft powdery texture that you see of freshly fallen snow. This snow is very bright surface. Snow is one of the brightest of all naturally occurring substances. So that's the temperature. We're trying to mimic the environmental conditions in which uh, snow is created. Ganesh Chilawena, fifth year PhD candidate, created this four foot tall chamber that's referred to as a snow globe. After all, inside is where the magic happens. Magical, well, maybe not in reality, but scientific, absolutely. So that's liquid nitrogen coming up and that's um, liquid water going down. It's uh, three styrofoam boxes stacked on top of each other. We have the liquid nitrogen cylinder. So that's the source of the cold temperature. So we introduce liquid nitrogen through the bottom. We're pushing water at a very high pressure. These water droplets are like less than 100 nanometers and they'll get flash frozen. Very similar to snow in the real world. Styrofoam boxes, they come in standardized size. So this was closest to what we wanted. Setting the stage for determining what's actually happening after wildfires, when dark brown carbon particles deposit on snow. When wildfires produce huge plumes of smoke, some of the smoke eventually lands on glaciers, darkening their surface and causing them to trap more solar radiation. This can enhance their melting rate and cause glacier recession. The Air Lab, which is the Aerosol Interdisciplinary Research Group's lab, first discovered that dark brown carbon has been this hidden source of accelerated snowmelt of mid-latitude glaciers. This particle was not previously considered to be that important of a light absorber. There were plumes of smoke and sampling the air. This field campaign was the first to identify, characterize, and show that it is at least four to ten times more abundant than the well-understood particle, which is black carbon. Now, the modeling study that I published, when we include both dark brown carbon and black carbon, what we see, this warming enhancement is up to two times compared to just black carbon, which was the previously well-understood particle in snow. My research takes it a step further in terms of what happens if this smoke deposits on snow. I'm manufacturing snow. When you darken it because of these wildfire aerosols, they start to trap more heat. He's trying to validate an agent which gives rise to enhanced snow melt and see if his model calculations could be uh, observed in a laboratory setting snow aerosol experiments without going to the field. His research could go a long way, ensuring accurate climate models and measurements. You can see the boiling liquid nitrogen. Receding glaciers impacts in terms of water availability and water security downstream of major glacier systems. If the snow melts very rapidly, that can lead to flash flooding in downstream areas. The next step so of the experiment is coming soon. Going to generate dark brown carbon by dry distillation of uh, wood chips. And I will be depositing those particles on the snow. What we're waiting on is some of the equipment that's needed to measure the reflectivities. The reflectivity change is what determines how much heat is going to be trapped due to these particles. This is for reflectivity measurements. Once the dark brown carbon particles darken the snow, just as it does after a wildfire, the snowflakes would go into a petri dish. So we will be varying a lot of different conditions related to the snow with the aerosols. We want the snow melt to be predictable. The snow globe experiments will continue into the new year.